Case 18 is a 46-year-old woman with a left-sided headache, neck pain, and Horner syndrome. On a, sometimes when I show these cases to the residents, I'll ask them what they believe their diagnosis is before they even see the images. I think this is a nice way to kind of hone your differential and think about uh, how the history ties into what it might be. So here are some images. This is a MIP from an MRA of the neck. Just take a look, see if you see any abnormalities. Here you see some axial images through the neck. Now these are a special type of images that you may or may not recognize, but uh, just be on the lookout for the abnormality here. And we'll talk more about the image type in just a second. These are just sagittal images through the same region of the area of the abnormality. It's the same image type there. Now your second question is what chemical makes the abnormality bright on the second set of images? So here now you realize you are probably talking about uh, hemorrhage, although cholesterol is kind of thrown in there as a choice. Now this is a carotid dissection. This is frequently associated with pain. You can often get a Horner syndrome. Uh, you can get uh, neurologic deficits uh, that are potentially related to abnormalities intracranially on the side of the abnormality. The pathology here is you get acute separation of the arterial layer, so the intima is separated from the median adventitia. Blood collects under that intimal layer and then ultimately converts to methemoglobin, which is the bright component there. Now this is associated with a number of conditions, like the most common thing you may see may be trauma or fibromuscular dysplasia. If people have vasculitis or other vasculopathies, uh, connective tissue disorders, that makes them more prone to getting carotid dissection. Now on CT or MRA, what you may see is a long, smooth, tapered vessel. You might see a flat, but many times you'll just see narrowing with smooth tapering. That type of imaging we were seeing is the T1 with fat saturation. So what you have to do is saturate out the fat of the neck. When the neck fat is uh, completely removed, what you see is the T1 bright methemoglobin in the wall. Atherosclerotic plaque can kind of have a similar appearance, but usually doesn't have this uh, kind of hyperacute uh, or this acute appearing methemoglobin. So here you see on this MIP of the MRA of the neck, you're really not seeing a lot of an abnormality. Like maybe there's a little bit of smooth tapering of the distal cervical ICA here, but I really don't think it's that apparent. So it can be a little, a little bit tricky. But when you do your fat saturated imaging through the neck, what you see is all the fat is saturated here and you have this crescent of T1 abnormality along the medial aspect of this left internal carotid. And uh, that's, that's your dissection flap there with the methemoglobin collecting there. And now we've already talked about this a little bit. It's the T1 bright methemoglobin that's collecting in the wall there. And just remember that importance of getting T1 fat saturated images to look for that methemoglobin.